Hello again, YouTube, and I'm, I'm, I'm back with an update on uh, my grid tie uh, solar backup system here. As you can see, uh, everything's good to go. I just took down my grid tie. And what it is, this is just an informational video that I thought would be, uh, you know, very informative for folks that are dealing with these um, cheap um, grid tie inverters that you can buy off of eBay, you know, the power jacks and the suns. And I recently overheated one. Um, and you know, it burned it out because I was running it at 95% capacity. It was a 500 watt sun grid tie, and you know, with voltage between you know 10.8 and 30 volts. And I was running it at 95% capacity, and quite frankly, the you know it overheated. <laughs> I believe it just simply overheated. And if you go, on, if you look online on YouTube, you will see that you know a lot of folks have run through the same issues. I have not repaired it yet, it's just because I had some backup, so you know I'll repair it later at my leisure. Um, this this video here is you know just an informational video again, and what it is is I want to show you what I've come up with to help cool the system down. Um, I saw another uh, YouTube user come up with you know with this this approach. Uh, before I did, um, this is you know it's not my idea, but I just took his idea and kind of I think uh, maybe in, improved upon it a little bit, um, but and put it into play and it works great. Okay, um, this is a Sun uh, grid tie inverter, 600 watt, and it takes between 22 and 60 volts DC to operate, and um, with since this is the U.S., it's uh, 120 volts AC output. And this is what I did to keep my system cool. Um, I run it for seven hours a day, seven hours a day, and it doesn't really put out because I'm I'm pulling the inf the power coming from my battery bank. Um, it puts out about maybe maximum around 230 volts, and uh, you know as far as two I'm sorry 230 watts, 230 watts. And some people may say, well, that's not a lot, but well, multiply 200 or 230 times seven on a good day. Um, so, and that's the amount of power that I am putting back, you know, into my home grid. Um, you know, it's, that's fine for me because my system is primarily, if you look here at my system, my system is primarily for a backup system. It's, that's it. But everything else, every little extra ounce of power that I pump back into the, my home grid, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. So with this right here, you know, uh, what I have here is the, you know, again, the grid timer and I have, you know, the stock fan that comes with it. You can see here, um, right over here, this is the stock fan that comes with it. And I took the liberty of putting in another fan, a really small fan back here. And so I have two fans on the inside of the unit and I also have a fan on the connected to the outer casing. A big, uh, nice big computer fan. Now these two fans are 12 volt fans. But what I did was I took the advice of some of my viewers in, uh, of, in earlier videos, and I just simply connected both of them in series to the DC inputs. So the DC, so it makes it 24 volt fans, um, and they work great. So what happens is when the power from my GTI controller turns on, uh, switches on for my grid tie these two fans will come on. This fan right here is blowing air out of the unit and this fan back here is blowing air into or bringing air into the unit. Um, and so I have a clear pathway. Now that works, that works fine. It just, I took it another step further and this fan, this fan actually blows air out okay of the unit you know it's a it's a 12 volt fan it's a computer fan it's you know it's a pretty pretty good it's 12 volts at 0.18 amps and so it doesn't really take a lot of power and this this particular fan is tied in directly to the board okay i use some uh, black electrical tape to just basically splice into it works fine works fine it's not perfect but it works fine um you know you could use heat shrink but you know the idea is still the same to insulate the wires and so, you know, and, you know, talking to Inbraj and, you know, there was, you know, the concern of whether or not the fan, um, you know, the unit, the, the board itself or you will support the power regulator will, uh, voltage regulator will support the fan. And I believe it will. And I've been running it for a while and it works fine. And besides these two 
these two fans, the one I have here and here, they're plugged in directly into the DC or tied into the DC uh, input. So, you know, it's not tied directly into the board. And it's so far after maybe a week or two, it's been running fine. Now, in order to do this, um, you're going to need basically four screws and four nuts. Uh, you're going to have to you'll have to buy a, you know, obviously a decent computer fan, and you know I've and you'll also need this. Okay, um, you know I went to Lowe's and I bought this and I made a, a nice hole in it. I drilled a hole. And I drill some holes in it for for the screws. As you can see, they're mounted pretty good. They're mount they're they're not mounted directly onto the back plate. There is a nut in between, so that that gives them a, a bit of airspace. So the blades won't come will never come in contact with the surface. So the blades will freely spin with no problem. Um, so and also the it's facing in a certain direction, so the air will be blowing out the hot air out. And when I use this, um, just to kind of give you an idea. I mean, this, the, you know, this is one big heat sink and, you know, this thing here is like barely warm. Um, I mean, it works really, really well and, you know, kind of gives you a little bit of a power boost because, um, you know, it doesn't overheat like, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, like it, uh, like it would without it. Now, one of the other things you say, well, how do you mount the thing? Well, what I do is I actually get, I got a couple of boards, as you can see right here. I'll put my hand here so you can see this as far as scale. Um, so you can see my hand and you see the width of it. So basically a nice couple of boards and I mount it on here. So it's about that much space, okay, um, between it'll between the fan and the board. So it'll have plenty of, of uh, air, uh, plenty of space to blow out the air. And I also take the liberty that I, I can run both fan, both of these fans, but I all I really need is one. And this is just an RV fan that um, I've kind of uh, uh, modified to, you know, kind of run. And it only takes about what, 12 watts to run, so it's no big deal. But anyway, I mount it on this particular board, and I'll show you that in a second. And it works great. So this is how it's mounted, okay? And... This is the unit itself. If you look at the back of it, again, four screws, and I've also drilled a hole so that the wires can go through. Now, if you look here, you see three wires, but eh, it, it only takes two. I can cut this away, so it's it, you know no big deal. Just a black and a red wire. This could be some type of control wire or some, some sensing wire, I don't know. Uh, it's irrelevant, but again, these two wires are tied directly into the board, and you know, and that's it. You know, Nice big hole in the back. You know, so there's uh, no restriction of airflow. I mean, it works great. Works great. Okay, YouTube, I'm going to pause the video and uh, and I'll show you it mounted. Okay, YouTube, I've got it mounted. And as you can, you can probably hear the fan now. Uh, since there is power going to the unit. And um, I have my system on a timer. All I have to do is just turn it on. And as you can see, it's working fine. I have this fan, that's a, you know, one fan coming on that blows across the unit, keeping it nice and cool, and also blows on the inside, the intake here. And the air just, it just blows out in two different places. It'll blow out here and in the back. Now the fan in, in, in the back is not on because the temperature doesn't warrant it coming on, but, uh, but the two fans, the fan here and the fan here, is they're on by nature of the fact, by virtue of the fact that you know the unit is actually working. So there's a fan, there's a constant fan or a constant current going across um, the components inside of the unit that uh, you know keeping them cool. And as you can see here, you can see the fan on the back. It has plenty of clearance, has plenty of clearance to blow the air um, outside of the unit. And as you can also see that it's not directly the unit, the fan itself is not directly touching the back of the unit. So the blades are, when they do come on, they will spin freely. And as you can see, my little GTI controller, I got the little, this idea from Imraj here, where I can actually, I just drill the hole and you can see the unit is actually working. So I just simply use this GTI controller as a voltage monitor. And, and you know, when my battery bank reaches a certain voltage that I don't want it to go below, it will simply, you know, not allow the unit, this rich high burner, to come on. Um, and as I stated earlier, my system is primarily for, you know, backup purposes. 
So any extra, um, any extra power wattage is going to my home grid. So you know, hey, it's it's a small, very small solar uh, setup, and it works great for me. Um, but again, YouTube, this is it. And as you can see, my unit is turned off because, you know, and also it's reached, my battery voltage has reached a certain point, 25.7. And if you look at my system altogether, it's essentially, it's, it's, it's always full. It's always 100%. So at rest, my system is 25.8 volts. That's at, you know, at total rest. So this is kind of normal and, you know. So as you can, as you can see, it works great works great and I just turn off my system here um, this is a timer that I got from Radio Shack and this this unit right here and it's it's a it's a timer and a, a surge protector all in one so at 7 a.m. the unit you know when I say unit the fans turn on this particular fan turns on I can turn on the other have the other fan come on as well but I see no need uh, this fan comes on uh, and also this this portion of the AC side is then active can then be activated and you know and this unit will interact with the with the home grid. Um, otherwise, the, on this side, the DC side, this is this you know the red light could come on, but unless this side is actually you know unless this this timer is slash surge protector allows it you know turns on these particular outlets at a certain time, then this unit will essentially not do anything until until that switch is thrown. Uh, this is the GTI controller, works great, um, work, been working with NROJ, and again, I use it differently than what maybe some people use it for, but I, I essentially use it as a controller, uh, you know, a voltage monitor slash controller, meaning if the voltage is at a certain point, then turn on my grid tie inverter. And, um, you know, I had my unit set, so it come on at, at when, my, when, this, when this voltage reaches 26.2 volts, 26.2, then, you know, turn on the grid time inverter and, and give me the extra power. All right, YouTube, um, again, hopefully this helps somebody out, you know, with the uh, cooling of your uh, grid time inverter. And, uh, you know, the cooler it is, the more efficient it's gonna work and also the safer it's gonna be. So, um, again, hopefully this helps somebody. All right, take care, YouTube.